What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Back Here Play with Q. I'm your host, as always, Rich Quinones. And uh, as we are starting to approach the dog days of summer, why not take a look at week one NFL lines and a little scheduling, if you will, with the schedule release party. We always like to play that little dicey day game of uh, wins and losses. Our guy, our NFL insider, uh, Lloyd Vance, kind enough to join us on a Wednesday edition of BYP from our very good friends over played against sports, 1450 Clemens Bridge road in Woodbury. Check them out open seven days a week. Uh, Lloyd, appreciate a couple moments, pal. I mean, did you get the marker out? And when you were looking at the schedule, did you start going wins, loss, wins, loss, wins, loss, or are you going to let it play out a couple more weeks? Yeah. Q, you know, I, I started hearing from, uh, uh, my relatives that are Eagles season ticket holders, and and they already started doing the whole schedule, and uh, they got them at fourteen and three already. You know, so you know it's crazy. You, you got to wait and let's see all this how it plays out, all this stuff. And and there's there's many camps, OTAs, and and then we move finally to training camp in late July, and then on from there. So uh, there's going to be a lot of changing with these rosters. Obviously, these teams have. 90 players on their roster right now. Everything's pretty fluid, but, uh, you know, hope springs eternal all around the NFL whenever that schedule comes out. Well, I'll tell you at first glance, right, with a gloss over in the NFC East, uh, on the road, the Philadelphia Eagles at New England, that's 425. By the way, talk about primetime games, right? 425 and up. The Philadelphia Eagles play one, two, three. They play three one o'clock games this coming season, which is unheard of. Um, then they turn around short week, Minnesota, right? But that game's their home opener. On the road to Tampa, Washington at home. Then you got to stretch the Rams, the Jets on the road, uh, Miami at home, Washington on the road, Dallas, you get to buy very late in the season, second week of November, not bad. And then Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco, Dallas, Seattle, New York. I mean, we're talking about potentially 14 and three, uh, 12 and five, 11 and six, 13 and four, whatever. That second part of the season is kind of a daunting task. Now, I looked at the schedule and the first thing I noticed, I'm like, all right, they're playing the Giants, right, on uh, Christmas Day. And then they got to turn around a week plus later, two weeks later, and they play them again. So they play the Giants two out of the last three games of the season. But I think that November schedule stretch is tough. I see some opportunities for them to pick up some relatively easy wins early on. It's not going to shock me if the Philadelphia Eagles start the season one, two, three, four, five and zero oh, uh, before they go on the road to take on the Jets and uh, Aaron Rodgers in New York, uh, four twenty-five game on Fox. So that's kind of where I'm at the first couple of games, but I think that second half of the season might be a little daunting for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, Q, and it's going to be interesting because, as you know, all season. This past one, I, I just kept talking about they, they weren't facing a lot of marquee quarterbacks and some of the matchups were kind of, you know, lacking. So yeah. we'll, we'll see this year. Uh, they, right now, in terms of winning percentage, the Eagles would have one of the toughest schedules. So we'll see how that shakes out. But uh, you want to see them against those quality opponents and, and see if they can handle that. It, and I did notice the same thing you did there on Thursday night football. Uh, one time and, and there are Sunday night football yep. a couple of times. And, you know, they're, they are one of the marquee teams out there. So they, if people want to see them and they always draw good numbers uh, and also, you know, Philly fans travel really well to those away games. So, you know, the NFL definitely use them as one of their upper echelon teams. And, and we'll see if they're able to play that out. Obviously everybody's extremely excited about the Eagles. I know last week, last week we kind of talked about, their draft and, mm -hmm. and their roster. And, and, you know, I hearken back to that old dream team uh, quote that I got from Vince Young so many years ago. And, and you just wonder, you know, with this roster and all the talent they've assembled, can they live up to all the hype? Uh, I am particularly interested in week 11. They're at Kansas City on Monday Night Football, uh, the rematch in terms of the Super Bowl and seeing if they, you know, close the gap between. Uh, Patrick Holmes offense and you know the Eagles have really concentrated on defense this offseason and, and we'll see if they're able to progress yeah that dream team season I mean their season fell uh fell off the wheels when the Giants waxed them on the road that was Victor Cruz's coming out party uh with the two touchdowns mm -hmm. Jacobs with the wheel route um 2011 
Giants went on to win the Super Bowl that year, coincidentally enough. And they've got one o'clock games, which bodes well if you're a fan because the Eagles have all these 425s. Uh, what's interesting too, though, is when you go back and you look at the Eagles, kind of that teeth of that schedule, you got to factor in too, you know, quarterback play at that moment, ground game at that moment. Are they getting to the quarterback in that moment? I'm talking about late November, right? That, that stretch, man, you mentioned that Monday night game um, on the road, mind you, against Kansas City. Then they turn around Buffalo. Now they get a little bit of a break only because they don't have to go out west to San Francisco, but then they turn around at Dallas five days later. I'm sorry, a week later at Seattle, back home to the Giants, who we don't know where they're going to be at, Arizona, and then the Giants again. So that's, you know, it, again, I, I hate to say it on what, May 17th, but if we're talking very early, early, early home field advantage, which is ludicrous to say, but just for BY, uh, BYP standards, um, that is it, right? That's a, um, that's a stretch of games that might define if this team has an opportunity to get home field advantage. And obviously look what happened last year, right? They were able to get home field advantage, take care of the Giants, knock out the quarterback with the 49ers, win the NFC championship, and then uh, ultimately lose to Kansas City in the uh, Super Bowl. Yeah, Q, it's going to be interesting because week 10 is their bye. Yeah. And, and as you said, you know, they need to come out of that bye healthy and ready to roll because at Kansas City, Buffalo, another tough team, San Francisco, who's quickly becoming their rival. You know, there's a lot of stuff going back and forth between Debo Samuel and, their, and the Eagles fan base. So that's going to be another fun one in week 13 at, at Lincoln Financial Field. At Dallas on Sunday night football after that, you talk about at Seattle, who's an improving team. You know, we'll see how Geno Smith does this year after his, you know, NFL Comeback Player of the Year award. Is he still their guy? Is he able to lead that offense? We'll see how that turns out. And then I, I did find that very interesting. As you said, they, they closed with the Giants, um, with the with the Arizona Cardinals yeah. kind of sandwiched in there. And you can figure that Kyler Murray will be back for that Arizona game. So that could be a shootout as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see how this plays out. Obviously, those six divisional games are huge for, for the Eagles. That always seems to set the tone for them. If they can come out with a you know four and two or better record in those six divisional games, that kind of tells the story of who's going to be the champion of that division. Now, we know uh, the no one has repeated in NFC East, and, and, and we'll see if the Eagles are able to do it. It's been a very long time. So, you know, they're loading up. Everybody's given Howie Roseman his bouquets. Well deserved after the draft and, and the roster he's put together, but you always have to worry about injuries and and you know a number of things. I think a big thing with the Eagles, biggest question marks to me are how they're going to place Shane Stake in there, who are offense coordinator who left, and, and Jonathan Gannon, their defensive coordinator who left. Can they replace those guys, and how quickly those new coordinators will gel with this team? Yeah, it's a good point. Um, and this year, the NFC East plays the AFC East. You know, the Giants for years, we would laugh. All right, you're going to open up the season against Dallas. Well, they did it last year on the road against Tennessee. They go for too late. They win that game, sets the tone for their whole season with Dable. Uh, now you open up against Dallas in week one. They go on the road, real tricky spot here, on the road against Arizona, on the road against San Francisco. They come back home against Seattle, on the road to Miami, back-to-back -back AFC East opponents, on the road against Buffalo, Washington, the Jets, Aaron Rodgers, then you got to make that cross-country trek. You got to go all the way out to Vegas, come all the way back to take on Dallas. Then they turn around, they got to go right down 95 with Washington. They come back and they host New England, get a bye, and then they rip it off and finish it off with um, Green Bay at home, Saints and Philly on the road, Rams, and then the Eagles at home, and who knows if the Eagles, again, will have anything to play for or the Giants will be vying for a playoff spot. The first thing that stands out to me, the first five games, six games of the season, where if this team is worth any, any type of weight uh, in, in, in gold, right? You go on the road, you beat Dallas. I'm sorry, you come home, you beat Dallas to open up the season. You split maybe against Arizona and San Fran. Maybe you beat Seattle to get to two and two. They need to be two and two before they go on the road against Miami and Buffalo because they're one and three. I can see them with a one and five start. 
So last year, six and two, maybe I'm flipping it this year, one and five, but that's a tough stretch for the Giants to begin the season. Um, and that's what happens when you make the playoffs, right? I mean, and plus the AFC East is going to be a very tough out for them. So I think the first five to six games are critical for the Giants, where I mentioned maybe the back end of the schedule was critical for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, you know, you, you got to start hot. And, and if you dig yourself a hole going in to your bye week or, or you're just behind the eight ball early in the season, you, you got two wins or, or so going into week six or so, that's just not a good formula. So last year they won a lot of games. People didn't think they were supposed to. Giants finished 10-8-1 and, and, and surprisingly make the playoffs. And, and But this year they're going to have more of that target as we're talking about on their back. Yeah, D Dable did a good job uh, getting this unit together in, in a quick, short period of time. And, and Joe Shane, will see how he does in terms of his draft class that he's assembled. Uh, they seem like we, they have a solid group there. And, and you know, Wink Martindale, he's got to fix that defense. So it, it, it's going to, there's some question marks with this team. Obviously, Daniel Driven's the biggest one. They gave him that big contract. Is he the still same guy he was last season? Uh, he cut down a lot of his turnovers, which was Achilles heel in the past. And uh, he's going to have to do a good job, particularly he should lean on Saquon Barkley. And I want to see Q, is Barkley going to come back in under that franchise tag? Uh, I don't think he signed it yet. So that's a big question mark going into training camp. Well, I don't think he'll hold out. But. Uh, you know, I don't know. I honestly don't know. So how important is Saquon Barkley to the Giants offense? Because obviously the Giants and Saquon are at a contract impasse. And, and I think what's happening now is you start to go down that slippery slope, right? And the last thing you want is to not have him available or out there. I mean, look, the numbers don't lie. 16 games played, 16 games started, 293 carries, 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, 57 uh, receptions, 338 yards. So you're talking close to 1,700 yards from scrimmage, including 1,300 on the ground, which by my math accounts for about 29 to 30% of the Giants' total offense. <laughs> so... Now, he wasn't at – look, when he was a rookie, he accounted for 33% of their offense. But be that as it may, I don't know. Part of me thinks that the Giants look at the market. We know their history with running backs. We also know the history of the NFL with paying running backs. So what they argue it has to do with the market just not being there for running backs. And that's why the offer was what it was. Yeah, the, the atmosphere is very tough, as you're pointing out, for running backs. They're just not paying them like they used to. I, I think the uh, franchise tag is around $11 million yeah. or so. And, uh, you know, to take it or leave it, because, you know, as crazy it sounds, Saquon's only been in league, what, about five years or so. Now he's considered an older running back, a veteran guy on, on the back end of his career, because running backs, we know, as they approach 30-ish, teams kind of step away from them. It always feels like they can find somebody in the draft or, or maybe even just sign an un, undrafted guy, you know? So, you know, it, I, I think he will be with the team, but you're right. He is a huge cog in that offense. And it definitely helps Dan Jones because he softens the defense up and it allows for him to do his play action plays and also have those safe throws across the middle and, and those little wheel routes to swing passes out to Saquon Barkley and let him do his thing in space. Uh, they, they've tried to fix this receiver position. Uh, we talked about that last week with, with, as they're trying to bring in some guys in the draft and they signed a couple guys because last year's group was just beat up and they just were kind of nondescript. So uh, very interesting team in terms of the Giants. It, as you're saying, Q, they're not going to sneak up on anybody. You know, last year, 9-7-1, um, but they're going to have to do a good job. And you talk about that early season. Uh, that first game right out to shoot, as you said, you know, yeah. playing playing Dallas, that's a tough proposition. It's a home game, so they should, you know, go out and battle them. Division rival um, going at Arizona, I expect them to win that game, obviously, with Kyler Murray being injured and, and the Cardinals are kind of disarray, trying to get things going under the cannon. Um, at, at the Niners, that's going to be a tough proposition. So, and, and then coming back all the way back home, to face Seattle, and then Miami's gotten a lot better. That's another road trip. Uh, you know, when you look at this first couple of games, they have four road games. And 
cul you know, culminating in week six, they're at the Bills, who are tough out. So, yeah. you know, they didn't do them no, any favors. You'd rather so, get that game, it, though, in Buffalo. You'd rather get that game early in Buffalo. You'd rather get that game yeah. September, October than November, December. Yeah, and 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 they're by. They have a late buy. It's so the, the, you know, week thirteen, and then down the stretch they have some tough games. You know, they're going to face the Eagles twice to end the season, and then they have the Rams sandwiched in there. So, um, they did a nice job last year, but quickly fans are going to forget. And then you know, Aaron Rodgers may be the toast of the town playing for the Jets. Everybody's going to become a Jets fan, and. and as crazy it sounds, the Giants could be on the back burner. Listen, Giant fans, and I speak for myself, hate the primetime games, hate the 425 games. Fan base wants one o'clock game. Um, so, again, they always get a handful of those, which is good. But what happens is when you make the playoffs, obviously, you're one of the marquee teams, primetime, 425, 8 o'clock, whatnot. Um, real quick, before we go to Washington and Dallas, you mentioned Saquon. So... At the bye week, apparently the Giants put an offer together on the table for 12.5 per year. Um, and one before the start of free agency reportedly worth 13 million with another million in incentives. So now you're talking 13 and change 14. He's not a $20 million running back. He's not a $15 million running back. I mean, I just, the injuries are still a concern, even though he played 16 games. Uh, it's still a concern to me. And, and I just, you want to see him out there because yes, he is a big time offensive weapon when he's out on the field and he showed this year it can be healthy, but I would just caution the giant fans. One season of health does not dismiss the last several seasons where he's been really banged up and he's missed games and significant amount of time. So again, you can't tell a player what to do, you know, that's why they have the agents, family, friends to advise him and whatnot. But I don't know. I, I think he's going to be hard pressed if he turns around and he sits out. It's not going to be a good look. It really isn't. Um, I think that's I, I personally, I think that's where this this is headed. Yeah. And, you know, Q, he, he needs a rest. You cannot go that Le'Veon Bell route where, where you sit out a whole season because Horrible. as you're saying, the position is just not what it used to be. You know, back in the day everything revolved around that bell cow running back. It's just not the way it is anymore in the NFL. And, and you see the giants and Dable kind of preparing for this uh, in terms of, you know, he brings Darren Waller in a tight end position. He brings Slayton back, mm -hmm. brings Shepard back. And then they, they bring in um, the young receiver uh, Hyatt coming out of Tennessee yep. Yep. in the third yep. round. So he, he's had some pieces on offense, but you know, the more days he sits out, and, and let's not forget the fining system is extremely high now in the NFL. If you're a signed player and and you're not in camp, they can fine you. I I think it's almost forty thousand dollars a day. Something crazy is that. So you know, I he may not sign that franchise tag until the last seconds. I think it's in mid July he will have to sign it or decide to sit out or or whatever you have you. So I think he will kind of sit out and. You know, this is going to be a long off-season story because, as you said, he he's kind of entrenched. The team's entrenched in terms of, look, we offered you this money in the past. You didn't accept it. The running acquisition is not valued around the league. You know, here's where you are, yeah. you know, and this is what we think you you deserve. So, you know, it's going to be a tough one, and, and his agent's going to probably get involved too as well. Uh, Wednesday edition of BYP with Q. Rich Quinones here, our NFL insider Lloyd Vance, kind enough to join us. Dallas Cowboys 12-5. and five. They opened the season with the aforementioned Giants. So a little back-to-back -back New York meetings. Giants and Jets on the road against the Giants at home against Aaron Rodgers. Still sounds funny to say. And the Jets back on the road to Arizona, back home to New England, back on the road to San Francisco. <laughs> then to the Chargers. They get the bye week, week seven, which – you know, that to me, I look at that and say that's really early. Um, but second portion of their schedule, they've got home games against the Rams, the Giants, and then they've got the Eagles and Carolina on the road sandwich. Then they come back. You might want to bookmark this November 23rd to 30th and the 10th, Washington, Seattle, and the Eagles all at home. They catch two breaks, they get that three game stretch at home. 
But then you got to go up to Buffalo, bad weather, but then you conversely go to Miami, warm weather. So it almost evens itself out, if you will. I don't see this team winning 12 games. I think the Dallas Cowboys, the makeup of the team, reeks of nine, maybe 10. And what I've circled, and you tell me where you're at, the stretch where they have um, the Rams, the Eagles, the Giants, Carolina, Washington, Seattle, the Eagles, like that, after that buy, that second back end of their schedule, man, I, I think that's going to be a telling, uh, telling sign of where this team is. They need to get out to a fast start with those first couple of games. And realistically, you can say they can rip off maybe four straight to start the season and perhaps stub their toe against San Fran, beat the Chargers. Worst case scenario, four, four and two for the Cowboys going into the bye. Yeah, too. It's, it's and really analyzing the schedule as you're going through it. I was like, man, they, they got a tough schedule. And, and we know Dallas typically they're up and then they kind of fall apart after that the next season. So we'll, we'll see if they're able to break that trend. We know Mike McCarthy's on a hot seat. They they were 12 and five last year in the regular season. And then they finally won that playoff game that they so needed, but then they kind of stumbled in the next round. So this is this is their chance to really say, okay, our program is established. We're not going to have that up and down trend that for so many years Dallas has had. And but they're considered once again America's team because I see they're on prime time over and over again. And, and uh, I, we talked about this with the Eagles. They're, the Dallas fans travel well, and they know they're going to get a lot of eyeballs on it on the TV sets when they're on playing. But um, I also agree with you that that stretch out of the bye is going to be. It's going to be tough because I think the Rams are going to be one of those bounce back teams this year. I know last year they were kind of down with injuries and everything, but you have the Rams, then they're at Philadelphia. Yep. Uh, the Giants game's always tough. It's a coin flip. So if, if Dallas beats them on opening day, the Giants may beat them uh, November 12th. And Carolina, obviously, that that's a letdown spot for Dallas, but they, they probably should win that game. Washington, big rivalry game. And then you're playing Seattle at Thanksgiving. And then, you know, then the season really gets constricted for the Cowboys after that. That Eagles game, I think, December 10th, it's going to be a tough one. And then you talk about that two-week stretch where they're at Buffalo and then at Miami back-to-back. -back. That's really going to tell you if this team is together or, or they're already falling apart and kind of everybody's looking ahead to the next season. <laughs> uh, the Lions, that's a tough proposition the week four and the end of season and then at Washington. So, you know, three or four last games on the road, that that's tough for any team. And then Dak Prescott does not typically play well away yeah. from Dallas. So that's going to be, that could be a tough stretch for them. Um, I, I do kind of agree with you that this may be, I know longer teams are 500 typically with playing an odd number of games, but this may be a 500 type season for Dallas. And then that could signal all kinds of uh, changes there. Well, yes. I mean, and obviously it potentially could be the quarterback and the head coach. I, I mean, you almost have to say to equate it to say the NBA with the Philadelphia 76 or sometimes you got to drop the hammer. Sometimes you got to trade players. Sometimes you got to fire uh, the coach and there's no player. There's no head coach that's immune to that. So I don't think the Dallas Cowboys on paper just record-wise, I don't see them winning 12. I don't, and I'm telling you, I think they're going to trip up late in the season. If they can come out to a nice start, four and two, I think then you've got some opportunities to be, uh, or at least to feel uh, optimistic. Um, all right. Washington, your guess is as good as mine, my friend. They, um, they're home against Arizona. Then they go on the road against uh, Denver and uh, Russ Crookin. They come back against the Bills on the road against the Eagles at home against Chicago, back to back road treks, Atlanta, the Giants, back home to Philly, which you know that's going to be a dog fight. Then they got to turn around. They got to go to New England, Seattle, come back home to the Giants at Dallas, home against Miami. They don't get a buy until week 14. And then yeah. their final four games of the season. You ready for this? If you're a Washington commander team on the road against the Rams, on the road against the Jets, who you know or you believe will be fighting for playoff spot in the AFCs, San Francisco, and then Dallas at home. I mean, this is just, if I'm a commander's fan, 
you're excited about, you know, everything kind of being tied up with the sale of the team, but this is a brutal, like this is a hit or miss schedule with Washington. And I still believe I can't even say this is a six, seven, eight, one team because I'm not sold on who's going to be under center. Yeah. You know, Joshua Harris is, it, you know, I, I'm hearing that the deal is going to go through pretty soon and, 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 you know, they're just working out all the legal ease and all that stuff. And um, he's getting a team that, man, there's nowhere to go but up. And, and they're talking about they need a new stadium and everything and all this. But um, the, the only excitement really is around changing an ownership because you talk about this schedule. I, I'm looking at Q and, and they're going to be a definitive underdog, quite frankly, almost every week, it seems, in a lot of these games. And, and um, that stretch, as you were saying, to end the season, particularly, you know, you play Miami, then you have the last bye, which is week 14. And, and so if your team's beat up, that sometimes that's a little late to help get guys back and this and that. And then you have to go out to Los Angeles, play a tough Rams team who, who, we, who we think is going to rebound. And then as you're talking about the Jets, are going to be a tough game, Niners, and then Dallas close the season. So Washington – you know, with an inexperienced quarterback or, uh, and Sam Howe or Jacoby Brissett, who's a retread, you know, I, I, I don't see many wins out here in this game. You know, a, a good barometer game may be around week two. You know, they're at Denver and we can Jeez. see if, if this team is they're if they're rebuilding or they're just kind of, you know, playing out the string or, or what they're doing, because. Uh, Caleb Williams is out there. We know he's the big chip, the USC quarterback, who's the Heisman Trophy winner. Are they putting themselves in position to get him, or, or what, what are they really trying to do this season? So it's interesting proposition with Washington. Yeah, they're fa- – now, week one, they are favored by six. Okay. Okay. But then you mentioned on the road against Denver, got to be a dog. Buffalo, got to be a dog. On the road against Eagles, got to be a dog. Maybe, maybe if they squeak out a win or two and go to two and two against Chicago at home, maybe that's a game where they're favored on the road against Atlanta, the Giants, Philly, New England, Seattle. Depending upon the Giants, maybe if the Giants sputter or they have catastrophic injuries that week 11, they host the Giants. Maybe that's a pick them. Maybe they're a slight favorite in that game. But you're right. I don't see them being favored um, in many games this year. And to your point with the Dallas Cowboys about their head coach on the hot seat, I believe this is it for Ron Rivera. Yeah, he, he did a great – he did a good job kind of pulling his team from the fire and all the disarray. And Daniel Jones wanted that sturdy hand in there after the whole Jay Gruden mess. And, and he did a good job with that. But – you know, you're right, uh, Q. They've kind of peaked and hit their ceiling with him. He, he's kind of a caretaker at this point. And the interesting thing is now he has Eric Bieniemy on his staff, who they gave that good contract to and paid him pretty well to be the offense coordinator. You wonder, is he the coach in waiting? So uh, Ron Rivera, a good veteran coach, very respected around the league. But uh, this is a tough schedule, and you're right. If he if he doesn't do well, I think this is it for him in Washington. Yeah, just just at glossing this over. I mean, it's the Eagles division to win again. I have more confidence, believe it or not, as crazy as this sounds, in Dallas's overall talent than I do with the Giants. I think the Giants overachieved uh, exponentially last season. They won games that they typically don't win, and we haven't seen that in a long time. I think that's to coach coached them up. Um, now the quarterback gets his 160. Now the quarterback really has to prove himself even more so. And if you take Saquon Barkley off that team, they're going to take a major step back. The schedule gods were not favorable. They did not help them. Washington's a mess. Uh, I mean, it's just, again, it's, it's the Eagles division as crazy as it sounds, right? It's the Eagles division to lose. I mean, they're, there's no reason they are the prohibitive favorites they are going to be the prohibitive favorites coming out of the NFC. Again, they're super bowl. They have good odds to win the super bowl and get back to the super bowl. So unless it's a scenario where God forbid hurts gets hurt, or they have some stretch of just horrible, poor play, they're going to be the team to beat in the NFC and they're going to be the team to beat in the NFC. Yeah. Right now I'd have to agree with you, Q. And, and, you know, first you look divisionally, as I always say, and, 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 
Hurts is the best quarterback in this division, and team's roster is loaded from top to bottom. They don't have a lot of weaknesses compared to the other teams in their division. And then the NFC, we knew last year the NFC was kind of down compared to AFC, and now you lose Aaron Rodgers, and that's another prime quarterback out there, so you're not sure what Jordan Love's going to do for the Packers. So I would say, yeah, the, the Eagles are a huge favorite. Do you know the line for them? Um, I was wondering in terms of – making a Super Bowl or anything like that right now? Yeah, so Eagles, I mean, they should be right around. I pulled it up. I mean, they, they have arguably the best odds. Um, I mean, I'm, I just saw, geez, you got to be kidding me. Plus 850, are you kidding me? Wow. I mean, geez. Kansas City has the best they're the favorites at plus 650 actually so the more i think about it um yeah that just that's yeah that does not so, that does not seem right i mean the eagles would have to be i would say plus 700 750 i mean you know what maybe maybe 850 is right i mean maybe maybe just early juice early on but right when we get to September, I think those odds will be around 700, 750. And then if they start to rip off five, six, seven in a row, then they're going to drop to probably 600, 550. So, yeah, let's just call it. I'll meet you halfway. We'll say anywhere between plus 750 to plus 850. Yeah. And and right now, everybody's saying, and I kind of agree. I know it's so early, but it, yeah. it may be a rematch. <laughs> I mean, these two teams are looking head and shoulders above the other. We, we always thought the Bills would be in the mix. Um, but the Bills kind of taking a step back and, and Sean, you're talking about being on hot seat. I think Sean McDermott's another coach you can list there being on hot seat. So, you know, both teams, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Eagles are prohib- prohibitive favorites in the conferences. And we'll see how it all plays out going in training camp. Uh, Bills plus 900, 49ers plus 1,000, Cincinnati plus 1,200. The Jets had the biggest jump at plus 1,800 and the Ravens sit at plus 2,000. But I think one team that people are going to prisoners of the moment, I think it's going to be Detroit until they shed that label of being a loser, a losing franchise um, and get to a playoff and win a game. I can't justify, even if plus 2,200, I'm not laying anything on Detroit. I, I, I think to me, it's more of a, you think they're due just because, right? They're inching, they're inching, and here you go. And a lot of times that's not the case, man. Like, haven't we found this? Teams that we don't really expect a lot out of sometimes make the move. And then in teams when everyone in the betting public is like, this has got to be their year, this has got to be their year, they take a major step backwards. I'm not saying that's going to be the case with Detroit, but I would not waste any money on them right now getting to the Super Bowl, let alone winning it. I think yeah, it's a more hype. Yeah, and, and and I always say to my son, you know, he, he, we talk about teams. I said, Detroit's Detroit, you know, because they've always been downtrodden. But, yep. you know, Dan Campbell has seemed to turn the corner with this no team. No doubt, no doubt. And, and we'll see what they can do. You know, we always kind of felt the same way about the Bengals. And, and Joe Bur- Burrow has been that great deodorant for that franchise. He, he's <laughs> kind of turned them around. And they are, you know, they're a team that can compete season yeah. in season out in terms of the championship in their conference so you know when i look at the lines we're going to get an answer early because they're at kc to open the season you know the marquee game uh yeah. the lions are going to kc uh they have seattle then atlanta at green bay carolina at tampa bay at the Ravens. yeah so they have a lot of winnable games early in the season you know their buys not to week nine they're playing Las Vegas in week eight before the buy, and, and they're another team that's kind of, you know, that we're, we don't know what we're getting from them at this point. So, you know, the, the schedule could be kind of favorable for the Lions, but you want to see can they overcome that Lions jinx that we talk about. And what, so, what's the biggest advantage the Lions now have going into this season? Hmm. It's right there. It's, it's, the, it's that elephant in the room, man. Who's not in that division anymore? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aaron Rodgers, obviously not there anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, eight, eight. at Green Bay, yep. September 28th. And and Jordan Love, I, you know, Q, I, I just, we have to see a lot more from him. And his limited amount of starts, he just did not look comfortable in the pocket. 
uh, was looked to uh, run way too early. And uh, they have a lot of work to do with him. So, you know, Jordan Love, that's a huge step down from Aaron Rodgers. I know in terms of locker room, uh, Rodgers wasn't that beloved. But, you know, I just don't know if Jordan Love is ready to step in and be that guy. Yeah. And listen, Chicago, Chicago. So that only leaves Detroit and Minnesota. So if they can figure out a way to win their division, then right. It's, it's a different animal. Lloyd Vance at Lloyd Vance, Ryan NFL writer, researcher, historian, PFWA award winner, former ESPN NFL network contributor. And of course, BCFHOF. That's a lot of stuff in that bio selection committee. <laughs> and uh, of course uh, the football father as well at Lloyd Vance, kind enough to join us on a Wednesday edition of BYP. All right, next week, we got to keep diving into the uh, NFC. Um, we'll look at um, the rest of the conference, the divisions. We'll kind of recap some of the trades. Um, I should say some of the draft picks by some of those teams in the South and the Central. So we'll have a little fun with that. And then you get through that dog day of summer, right? That stretch. And then we start to break for training camp. And we're going to blink. It's going to be August preseason. NFL is going to be back. Yeah, before we know. But, it, you know, right now we'll kind of – sit back and just see how these rosters come together. Remember 90 guys on all these teams and, and they're just going to have it shake out and we'll see how it goes. And somewhere along the way, some story will break that we'll be able to kind of di dissect into something's going to happen because this is, as you say, it's the NFL. It's nonstop 24, seven, 365. So he's Lloyd Vance kind enough to join us on this edition of back your play. Appreciate a couple of moments, pal. All right, cute. Thanks for having me on.